Before we go to the microscope, though, I want to just quickly mention um, how a fungus reprodu reproduces. So if you think about a fungus you got in your yard, you see a mushroom, right? That mushroom is the product of sexual reproduction in a fungus. So here we have all these little teeny tiny dots. These little teeny tiny dots are the equivalent of a mushroom. So what happens is we have one strain here of all these filamentous um, structures called hyphae. We have another strain over here. Our hyphae then come together and they get together. Okay. Where these hyphae get together then, uh, hyphae are a fungus, the main, the main state of a fungus is called haploid, which means it has one set of chromosomes. In people, our main state is diploid, meaning that we have two sets of chromosomes. So our life cycle, we are diploid, we go through meiosis, we make sperm and eggs. Our sperm and eggs get together and make a diploid adult. In fungus, their predominant stage is haploid, being these hyphae that occur everywhere, big giant mats of hyphae all over the ground. Then when one strain meets the other strain, those two strains get together and make a mushroom. That mushroom then has a diploid stage. It when it becomes diploid, it goes through meiosis, making what are called haploid spores. The teeny tiny haploid spores then are released from the mushroom, go fly out, and land on the ground somewhere and then grow into hyphae. Okay, so that's what's going on here is that we had a spores here, the hyphae then grew out, those hyphae grew out into mushrooms, all these little black dots in here are mushrooms, and we're going to look at the actual spores inside these mushrooms. The interesting thing about these spores is that these spores are colored, so our tan um, strain makes tan spores. Our wild type strain makes black spores. Okay, so the techniques we'll be using here then um, to analyze these fungi um, will be that I will be making a wet mount. So here I have a different type of microscope than what we looked at before. This is a dissecting microscope. We can see here no objectives down below here. Okay, my plate of Sordaria famicola that we looked at a few minutes ago now is on the dissecting scope. I have it hooked up to a camera. The camera gives us a live feed of the things on the plate. Okay, so now I'll move to a view from the microscope. So here's a view through our dissecting scope of these little teeny tiny mushroom or the equivalent of mushrooms um, in this sort of area. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in dissecting scopes, then you can do things too. And so I'm going to zoom in. Then I'm going to focus. We can see these individual mushrooms. Inside these mushrooms, then, um, are spores. So basically, spores are the reproductive structures of fungi. These little teeny tiny. Um, mushroom-like things, which are called parathesia. These mushroom-like things are actually little um, cannons, where you can see they're shaped like a cannon. The top of them explode off, and they launch mushrooms way out into the air when they're all mature and ready to go in and reproduce. You can see all of the fine hair-like structures in there. Those are the hyphae. All right, the next step is to actually make the wet mount. So to make the wet mount, I'm going to take a um, water bottle and we'll put a drop of water on the slide itself. Okay, so I have a little bit of water on the microscope slide. Move the water bottle. Now I have a Bunsen burner going. Anytime you work with bacteria or with um, microorganisms, you want to make sure you use a sterile technique. So in this case, the fungus doesn't get infected by other fungi or bacteria. So I'm going to flame my loop. Now the nice thing about um, the nice thing about um, dissecting scopes is then I can use the dissecting scope to watch and see exactly what's going on in here. Okay, So I'm going to use this dissecting scope. I'm just going to scrape carefully off. 
to move these parathesia. I don't want to get any auger, so the technique, right, I'm kind of taking it back and scraping it like I'm shaving these little guys right off of there. I'm going to take all of these guys and I'm going to put them into the water. Reflame my scalpel so that I don't have any fungus on the scalpel. Put the lid back on the plate. Then I'm going to grab a cover slip. We'll put a cover slip gently on all of these little microorganisms. Now in this case, the final step that we want to do is that we want to take a chem wipe. And we want to actually explode those parathesia so we, so we get all of the spores out of the parathesia. So basically I'm going to take this, we'll just put the chem wipe on top and gently press down to explode all of those little parathesia. So here's the view through the microscope. Actually, picking these up with the scalpel. So you can see the scalpel there. You can see how we go down and we just shave off. We grab these little guys. And if we look very carefully, I can focus in on that. So we can see all the little teeny tiny parathesia on the end of that scalpel blade. So here are, are all of our um, little mushroom guys in there. So each one of those little black dots is one of the mushrooms that we have in there. And then I basically push down on the cover slip to launch out the spores. So right in the center I have one that's really good. We're going to zoom in on that one underneath this dissecting scope. And I'm going to go all the way in and I'm going to focus as you zoom you actually have to change the focus and there we go that's really nice we're going to go ahead and look at this underneath the compound scope here in a couple minutes and that's as close as we can get on that guy but we can see that guy really well we can see how i pushed on it i exploded it and then out of that um, um, parathesium or mushroom then we can see how we have all of those chains of spores stuck together so we have kind of a little rosette of chains of spores all sticking out on that guy now we're going to look at these guys underneath a compound scope get up under a lot higher magnification okay so now the goal of this microscopic investigation is to show you how to um, identify an ascomycete and ascomycete is in the division ascomycota. The ascomycota then is characterized by the reproductive spores called ascospores that occur in chains of eight or a sac of eight spores called an ascus. An ascus is singular, and asci are plural. Right dead center in this image under the 100 X magnification, 10X ocular, and 10X um, objective is an ascus with eight spores. We have four black spores and four tan spores. Now notice that the four tan spores came from the tan strain. The four black spores came from the wild type strain. And the way that these are made is that um, ascomycetes go through a round of meiosis first, which produces four spores. And then they goes through a round of mitosis next, which produces then two for each of the four, ending up in eight spores. So this is a nice close-up view under the um, 40x objective of an ascus, fully intact ascus with all eight spores, four black and four tan. So in all of these life cycles, we want you to focus in on a couple things. Um, this week and next week in plants. One of those is mechanisms for reproductive success in different types of environments. 
The second one is genetic diversity, right? So as we mentioned before, the purpose of sex and sexual reproduction is not to make more, but really is to make genetically diverse offspring. And so this is a good example of how things are going to be genetically diverse in the offspring. These spores themselves, you can see that we have different combinations of tan and black spores. So in the process of meiosis, um, what goes on is that we have crossing over occur. So we have recombination and crossing over. The percentages or numbers of tan and black spores then represent crossing over. So you notice in this image we have a 2 tan, 4 black, 2 tan. We also have a 2 tan, 2 black, 2 tan, 2 black. Both of those combinations then are results of crossing over in meiosis and give another example of how multiple mechanisms for genetic diversity are seen in these multicellular organisms.